All right, in this video, I want to talk about how to calculate frequency and wavelength using the speed of light. Um, so there's a couple things that uh, I kind of want to um, want to go over a little bit briefly, um, you know, here before we get uh, really started, I guess. Um, and that's basically that uh, just to kind of catch everyone up. The uh, the formula for uh, wavelength and frequency is V, which stands for frequency equals the speed of light represented by C over um, wavelength, which is that little lambda, I think it's called, uh, that little upside down Y there. And the other thing is that uh, Hertz is the same thing as uh, per second, which is usually represented like that, S to the negative one, per second. Hertz and per second uh, mean the same thing basically. So uh, these two things are the same and that's our formula. So uh, this is our formula. Let's, oh, and uh, the speed of light, um, C, is 3.00 uh, times times 10 to the eighth. And I would just commit that to memory. I mean, you really don't have to try very hard to remember it. After you do a couple, you know, five or six problems, you've just about got it down uh, anyway, um, but you know, don't file that in the back of your brain. You know, under you know whatever something you're going to remember. Just uh, make sure you you hold on to that information because you'll need it later on in in higher chemistry classes and physics and stuff like that. It's just a good idea to remember it. Uh, any scientist that's really worth their weight in salt, haha, <laughs> no chemistry pun intended, uh, knows the speed of light. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. So moving on. So let's go ahead and do this problem here. Okay. Uh, and there's a couple different ways you can go about doing that uh, using this right here, and I'll talk about each uh, in here. So let's go ahead and just plug in uh, the values. Or actually, first, let's talk about the formula first. Um, I talked, if you watched my uh, <clears throat> P1, V1, uh, P2, V2 videos about a little bit about cross multiplying. And I really like the cross multiplying method, I think it just keeps things simple. Uh, that way you only remember one formula instead of having to remember several. Um, so with this uh, this formula here, we're going to cross multiply before we solve for any unknown. All right. Um, so by cross multiplying, you know I'm going to multiply this by that, and uh, and and you may even say, how am I going to cross multiply this? You know, well v is really over one, so that by that. <clears throat> so that's kind of in. Uh, in an algebraic sense how we're going to go about cross multiplying this. It'll come out to be uh, frequency times wavelength equals C. So it'll come out to look like that. Then we just plug in whatever we're looking for. If we were going to solve for uh, frequency it would just be wavelength divided by both sides. Wavelength is going to cancel out. We're left with our original formula up here, right? <laughs> If we wanted to solve for uh, or actually oops if we wanted to solve for um, wavelength, we would divide frequency by both sides <clears throat> right so, so once we cross multiply, we just uh, plug in our unknown and solve for that, right? Um, so in this equation, it asks for calculate the wavelength. So we're going to use this formula for it right here. But this way, just, just by remembering one formula and knowing that I have to cross multiply, it saves me from having to remember all three of these formulas. So anyway, I hope that helps. That's how I'm going to go about doing this video. All right, so we're going to solve for wavelength. So we know the speed of light, right? So wavelength, let me do this in a different color, maybe yellow. Wavelength is going to equal the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth over our frequency, which is 4.74 times 10 to the 14th. That's a 14 there. I should write a little bit better. Hertz. And Hertz is, oh, and this is meters. 
per second, right? Well, this is going to cancel out and give us an answer in meters, right? Because hertz and per second mean the same thing. So these two are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with an answer in meters. Well, that's fine and dandy, except our problem here asks us for an answer in nanometers. So this would give you an answer in meters. You could say that blank meters you know, times for every one meter, there's going to be one times, you know, 10 to the 9 nanometers, a 1 with 9 zeros behind it, and that's fine and great also. <clears throat> that will give you your final answer, but I like to keep my, my, my life a little bit simpler, and instead of doing this conversion problem over and over and over again, let's say we've got five questions and all five of them want an answer in nanometers, that's five additional steps. Well, there's got to be an easier way, right? Well, there is, and I'll kind of give you a secret in, into doing this here. <clears throat> Instead of uh, using the speed of light in meters per second, you can just use the speed of light in nanometers per second. And a lot of times, wavelength problems, especially when they deal with light, will want your answer to be in nanometers <clears throat> because it's, it's a lot easier uh, of a whole number to deal with than you know, a point zero 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 zero, you know, whatever uh, meter <clears throat> per second. You have to forgive my coughing. I'm starting to get a cold. <coughs> hmm, pardon me. So, if you wanted to do it this way, you can. If you want a little bit of a simpler way, you can take, <clears throat> and I'll do this in a different color. Maybe green. You could say that wavelength equals the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to, we don't know what the power is going to be, but it's going to be in nanometers per second, over the frequency, 4.74 times 10 to the 14th uh, hertz. Okay, so we know that uh, speed of light in meters per second is 10 to the 8th power, and in nanometers, it's 10 to the 9th power. So if we add those two together, it's going to give us 10 to the 17th power. That's the quick and easy way of converting this instead of uh, meters per second, nanometers per second. So that's going to be 17th power. Now, if they wanted it in micrometers or micrometers or however you want to pronounce it, uh, that would be 1 times 10 to the 6. We would just add... 6 uh, to 8, and it would be, uh, what is that, 14 instead of uh, 17. Um, so you can do it that way, you know, as well. There's not really um, any specific uh, restrictions to this that I'm aware of, at least. You can do it if it was kilometers. You could add, uh, you know, the 3, 1 times 10 to the 3 to the meter instead of the 8. It really doesn't matter. Or you can do it this way. I like I like to do it this way because it's only one step instead of two. And if I have five problems and they're all wanting them in nanometers, instead of five additional steps, I just have to do the one additional step to convert this from uh, 10 to the 8th meters to 10 to the 17th nanometers per second. Anyway, do it however you want. I'll do it in both just so you get an idea of how it's done. All right, so let's go ahead. We've got our formula written out. Let's go ahead and pull up our calculator here. Get this out of the way. And get started. Alright, I just downloaded this calculator for this problem, so you'll have to forgive me. Let's go ahead and do the first one here. Alright, we're gonna do 3 times 10 to the 8th meters divided by 4 point seven four uh, times ten to the fourteenth hertz that's going to equal some really big number um, you see here that's four seven four oh, let me do that in a different color Four point seven four times ten to the uh, 
Let's see, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's a 14 right there. And you know what? That actually doesn't... Did I add that instead of dividing? That doesn't quite look right. Hold on a second here. Let's do that again. Just to be safe, because it shouldn't be that big of a number. 3 times 10 to the 8th. I did hit add. Divide by 4.74 times 10 to the 14. Yeah, that's more like it. So 6.329. Let me get rid of that. Sorry about that. New calculator. Getting used to it. Okay. Delete that. And what did I say it was? 6.329 uh, times 10 to the negative 7. And that's meters. So see how that's a smaller number? We don't want that, so we're going to take 6.329 times 10 to the negative uh, 7. We're going to plug that in here and multiply that by 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers. So multiply that by, let me move this down so you can kind of see it there, 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers. That's going to equal 632.91 nanometers. So that's a nicer whole number that we really want to work with this. So we can do it this way, or you can just turn around and in the very beginning, plug in <coughs> this 3 times 10 <coughs> to the 17 divided by 4.74 times 10 to the 14. That's going to give you 632.91 nanometers. 2.91. So it's all personal preference. <coughs> I prefer to keep my life simple. So if you see me do problems like this in the future, I'll do them this way. Uh, that's how, and that's both ways you can do it. Anyway, hope that wasn't too confusing. And thanks for watching.